الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين رب الشرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So in the last session we saw in ayah number 30 which is where we left off that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins to talk about the universal evidences for the tawheed the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the uh, ayah number 30 it started off saying awalam yaralladhina kafaru do the ones who disbelieve not see anna samawati walad kanata ratqa that the skies and the earth they used to be one mass they used to be joined together and then we split them apart and then he spoke about how every life uh, the basis for every life every creation is water will they not then believe from then on, the surah continues to point out more awesome scenes, this time from the earth. So here we see from ayah number 31, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَعَلْنَا فِي الْأَرْضِ رَوَاسِيَا And we made on the earth rawasiya. Rawasi is basically firm mountains. All right. أَنْتَمِيدَ بِهِمْ And what is the practical benefit of uh, placing these mountains on the surface of this earth? This part of the ayah explains that we placed firm mountains mountains on top of the earth so it does not shake with them antamida bihim it does not shake with them it remains firm with them their mountains are like the pegs on uh, the face of this earth right it prevents the mountain it prevents the earth from shaking and that's how we are able to walk on its surface with comfort again a practical function of the mountains wajalna fiha fijajan subula and we made on it that is the it going back to the earth. We made on it fijajan is pathways or um, you can say pathways and subula is passages. So both are actually synonyms, right? Pathways, pass, passages, la'allahum yahtadun, so that they may be guided, guided to, to where? To their destinations during their travels, etc., etc. Then I number 32, wa sama'a saqfan mahfuza, And then we made the sky a well protected protected canopy right um here saqfa is canopy mahfuza is protected wahum an ayatiha mu'ridun still how is the disbeliever responding to all of this the earth as a canopy meaning it does not fall upon us imagine if that were to happen right yet allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says yet they okay keep turning away mu'ridun keep turning away from what from our signs right the celestial bodies the, uh, the 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 landmarks that you have on the safe on the face of this earth they don't reflect upon it and therefore they do not reach the right conclusion the proper conclusion which is the truth that the creator has no partners it cannot be then in ayah number 33 and the one who created this is the verb and these are all maf'ul bihi as you see the fathas over here he created what did he create the night the day the sun the moon kullun what is this kullun referring to each one of these yani the layl the nahar the shams the qamar night day sun and moon each one of them in the orbit falakin is orbit in the orbit yes bahun they keep swiftly traveling flowing sabaha basically means a person swimming so that's the imagery that is being struck here all right next in ayah number 34 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to address one of the most basic objections or common objections of the Quraysh regarding rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then he also states in this passage the fundamental law that governs life Right? So let's look at it. Ayah number 34. Wama the surah says, We have not made, okay, I'm giving literal translation. We have not made for a man, okay, for a man, min qablik before you, al khulda, uh, permanence. So this is the literal translation, like I said. What does it mean? We have not granted. Ja'alna can be used in the meaning of granted. We have not granted any human being before you everlasting life. Right? Immortality. That the khulda means immortality. Afa immitta 
okay? If you are going to die, فَهُمُ الْخَالِدُونَ Then do they think that they are going to live forever? It's a rhetorical question, right? It's a rhetorical question that comes with an exclamation mark. Now, this verse was revealed when the kuffar of Quraysh, they saw Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and um, they said that, uh, is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam going to pass away? Like, really? He's not going to live forever? Allah responded to that by saying that we have not granted everlasting life to any human being this is where he's saying right I number 34 we have not granted everlasting life to any human being every creature is bound to die and whatever has a beginning will certainly have a end all right I number 35 Kullu nafsin this is the fundamental law that governs life Kullu nafsin each and every soul will taste or shall taste death there's not going to be any exception, neither is there going to be any exemption, right? وَنَبْلُوكُمْ And what, what else about this life? وَنَبْلُوكُمْ بِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ فِتْنَةً And we will test you with evil and with good as a trial. So both scenarios in life, شَرْ is evil, literal translation, خَيْر is good. Now both of these, they are tests of life what is the test at t in times of evil and evil what are we talking about we're talking about like distress loss of life loss of wealth right poverty um just uh, going through uh, sickness all of that 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 all those experiences they're part of a test in this life similarly the comfort the affluence the wealth the honor the status that you have in life children everything that is considered to be good right they're all also part of a test in this life and that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is highlighting over here when a blue kum bishari wal khairi fitnatan so we that's why we don't believe in the fact that when a person is going through hardship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is punishing him that is not our mindset that is not a believer's mindset every experience in life is a test right how does a believer respond to it there's a hadith of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I have put that in your footnote over here Look at this one. It says, قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ عَجِبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ The affair of the believer is amazing. إِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ لَهُ خَيْرٍ Indeed, his affair, amrahu, all of it for him is great, is good. وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكْ لِأَحَدٍ إِلَّا لِمُؤْمِنِ And this is not the mindset for anyone but a believer, right? إِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ سَرَّ If hardship, if... Um, Good times, sarra. If good times come upon him, shakara. He is thankful. Yani, he shows gratitude. Okay. Fakana khayrullah. And that is good for him. Wa in asabat hudara. And if hard times or hardship comes upon him, sabara. He remains patient. Fakana khayrullah. Then that is best for him. The hadith is in Muslim. So the test is that of patience are you going to remain patient when you is your faith going to remain unshakable through sickness and poverty that is the test of shar okay or are you going to have gratitude this is the test of khair are you going to have gratitude during comfort and affluence right this is actually harder the second one the test of khair is actually harder because in comfort who remembers that it is a test. We are calmer and therefore we may become less aware that it is a test too. But every moment in life is a test. Don't take life for granted, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then concludes this section by mentioning the ultimate truth of this life, which is wa ilayna turja'un and to us, only to us you will be returned. So this actually was turja'una ilayna. Jar majur construction should always come towards the end, right? That's where its place is in the, in the sentence structurally. But over here it has been preceded and that is for emphasis. And the emphasis is what? To us, only to us you all will be returned, okay? So that's ayah number 35. Now continuing ayah number 36 here. 
the surah talks about the way the disbelievers responded to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam their mockery that they hurled at him and their persistent disbelief so here he's allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa idha ra'aka and when they see you you meaning rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah is talking to rasul and when they see you the ones who disbelieve so the ones who disbelieve when they see you they are only make, making fun of you. Literal translation, they only take you except in mockery. Meaning, they are only making fun of you. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also uh, pu uh, puts here or makes, this, uh, makes their response part of this ayah, the statement that they say to one another. And that is, is this the one who talks about your God? Meaning, how do they mock Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Here, in the beginning, Rasul, uh, Allah says that when they see you, they're making fun of you. That's the only response that they give you. And how are they making fun of you? They talk to one another and they say, is this the one who's making fun of your rubs? Making fun of your gods? Meaning, he's the one who's criticizing your God? And subhanallah, وَهُمْ بِذِكْرِ الرَّحْمَانِ هُمْ كَافِرُونَ They criticize Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he is talking against their supposed gods. But they find nothing wrong in themselves doing the same against the one who is in fact their creator. Right? وَهُمْ بِذِكْرِ They, by the mention of ar-Rahman, they are indeed being disrespectful or they are being the, the disbelievers. Right? They disbelieve in the mention of ar-Rahman. Yani they, here, they disbelieve in the mention of ar-Rahman. Do it again. When the ones who disbelieve see you, they only respond to you in the way of mockery. And they say to one another, is this the one who is talking about your gods? Like he is the one who's criticizing your God? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and they don't see what they're doing themselves, that is they disbelieve in the mention of Ar-Rahman by turning away from him, right? And not only that, what is more is that they try to hasten the punishment against which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wants them in the way of mockery, right? They would say like, fine, you're talking about this punishment, you're talking about Jahannam, you're talking about fire, where is it? Bring it on, right? To that, Allah Subh'ana wa Ta'ala responds by saying, خُلِقَ insan min ajal." Man has been created, man has been created hasty. سَأُرِيكُمْ ayati. We are going to show him, we are going to show you all our signs right signs of what the signs of uh, signs meaning that the, that the the promises of punishment we will soon show it to you the sa over here means soon we will soon show you we will soon show you all my signs of punishment fala tasta'jiluni do not be hasty in it do not rush it right meaning what they used to say is like if this is true where is the punishment? And Allah is saying, hold off. It's going to come. When is it going to come? Let me tell you. But before that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the context in which this ayah was revealed. And that is in ayah number 37. They used to say, when is this promise going to be? Right? In kuntum sadiqeen. If you are truthful, talking to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it's going to come. Trust me. This is how it's going to come. Number 39, if the ones who knew, if the ones who disbelieve only knew the time, the time when they will not be able to prevent from their faces, from their faces, the fire, neither, neither from their backs. Right? Neither from their backs, neither wala hum yun sarun, neither will they be helped. Right? If they knew, meaning if who are the they, if the ones who disbelieved only knew that this will be the time when they will not, there will come upon them a time when they will not be able to remove the fire or stop the fire or prevent the fire from their faces from their backs and neither will they be helped it's implied over here they would not have asked such questions right they would not have asked 
such questions meaning if they knew what will happen they would change their attitude completely stop the mockery right and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is all implied like just let them wait in ayah number 40 Allah says Bal ta'tihim baghtatan fatabhatuhum. rather this this punishment that they are trying to hasten that they're asking you to bring upon them tell them that it is going to come to them suddenly all of a sudden and what's going to happen then it is going to stupefy them they're going to be bewildered all right it's going to stun them this is of course referring to the punishment of the hereafter and what's the reality of that punishment they will not be able to prevent it right they will not be able to prevent it neither will they be given time time for what time for repentance okay and number 41 so here this is the punishment that uh, Allah is talking about that will be in the hereafter okay but then there's the punishment for these people in dunya as well messengers all right messengers before you have been made fun of fun made fun of Memorize this word, which means to make fun of, to be made fun of. And what happened as a consequence? The ones who made fun of them were overwhelmed. Overwhelmed, why? They were overwhelmed by that very thing that they used to make fun of. Meaning they used to make fun of the punishment coming upon them, the... Uh, the, the death coming upon them, all of that they used to make fun of, right? They used to make a mockery out of the message of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that in this dunya, those communities before you that had the same attitude, well, the punishment did come upon them. And it came to them exactly the same way that they used to make fun of this message, right? The ones who made fun of them, they were overwhelmed by exactly, by, by that which they used to make fun of right the punishment of the hereafter which is what they used to make fun of number 42 here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says again uh, he, he pu pu puts forth another question and he says who can protect you um, night and day from the most merciful protect say who can protect you night and day from the most Ar-Rahman from the most merciful Bal Hum an dhikri rabbihim mu'ridun Still they turn away from the remembrance of their Rabb Mu'ridun You should know this one by now Turn away Still they continue to turn away This is turn away from the remembrance of their Rabb If they just reflect like night and day Who is the one who is protecting you Who is the one who is providing for you See and even our Rahman is mentioned over here Merciful it's, it does not say Allah And in that again it's perfect purposeful because it's supposed to evoke feelings of gratitude feelings of awareness of the relationship that creation is supposed to have with the creator who's given everything to him yes you know in the past recording we talked about eyelids and eyelashes just reflecting on that a, some, a small part of our existence right a small part of our being just reflecting on that if we take a moment we just realize how dependent we are on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right we go to sleep and if we don't wake up then it's done so who is the one who's taking care of us night and day? Then how is it that we still keep turning away from our Rabb, right? The same question that is asked here in ayah number 42 is repeated again in 43 in a different form. Am lahum aliha. Do they have other gods? Tamna'uhum min dunina who will protect them or prevent them against us? Yani give them protection against us? How can that be? Those gods, those false deities themselves here, deities themselves la yastati'una nasra anfusihim they will not be able to protect themselves those gods that they're so obsessed with they will not be able to do anything for themselves how will they protect them right wala hum minna yushabun neither will they be accompanied by their idols now this was 
you know, this ayah, it's actually according to the context of those times. Back in the day in the desert, what would happen is if anyone committed a crime in the village, he was required to pass by the homes of the people he committed the crime against. That was like a punishment, right? Of course, now he couldn't go there by himself because people would kill him. So then he would go to the most powerful member of that tribe and he would ask him, can you accompany me so that you can give me protection when I pass through these homes. And it is that culture or that practice that is being referred to over here. Like, don't think this is what you can do in dunya that you'll be able to do in the akhirah as well. So that's why Allah is saying, Wala hum minna yushabun, And they will not be accompanied, right, by us. All right. Then um, the last ayah for today, what has caused them to become deluded? Ayah number 44. Like, why do they continue to behave in this manner? Um, before I go to this ayah, just keep in mind that human human being is a very weak creature. C creature, I'm saying creature, right? And the tendency to become corrupt is very easy if the if he does not guard himself, right? Now, what can easily corrupt the nature of a human being is when he gets deluded by the length of his life right the long enjoyment of the good things in his life it is luxury that if you're not mindful may lead you or may lead to the weakening of the awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you may forget and that is the test of good times and that's why we say that the test of good times is actually a tougher one because when you are in difficulty automatically naturally you may run to God right you may run to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but when you're in good times, the tendency is that that awareness of Allah weakens, that that link may weaken, right? If the person in that situation allows himself to drift away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and forgets the very source of all blessings that he enjoys, then he is bound to fail this test. And that is what happened with these people. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights over here. He says, I said creature, it's not creature, it's creature, okay? بَلْ مَتَّعْنَا هَا أُولَاءِ وَآبَاءَهُمْ حَتَّى تَالَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْعُمَرِ So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that we have allowed, right? مَتَّعْنَا We have granted these sinners, هَا أُولَاءِ These sinners, okay? The ones that are referred to over here, these sinners and their forefathers until life became long for them. What does it mean? That we gave them time to enjoy life for a long time and they have taken it for granted so life became longer and they became deceived and fooled by it and then allah says afala yarona do they not see anna na'ti al ard that we bring the earth nanqusuha min atrafiha and we shrink it nan shrink Okay, we shrink it from its borders. What, what does it mean? Think about all the big empires that existed. This phrase, what does it mean? Um, the big empires that existed, whether it was the Persian Empire, whether it was the Roman Empire, whether it was the British Empire, what happens to them eventually? The big lands that they occupied, the large lands that they occupied, they have now all shrunk. That is what is referring to, right? The big, and what do we mean by big, uh, they have shrunk? The big empires that they used to be at one time have now split into small states. It can also mean how Islam is spreading, referring to the time of, particularly to the time of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But because this is a Makki Surah, it cannot refer to the battles of uh, Badr, but um, it, it, it could be a prediction. In, in, or, you, or you can say that this is what it's referring to, is that these big empires just, uh, nothing lasts forever, right? Everything is temporary. All these kingdoms that had existed have now shrunk and they have big split into small, small states or they have even completely vanished. They don't even exist anymore. Their names even don't exist, right? So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concludes by saying, like, this is what the cycle of life is. Despite seeing all of this, and they see it in front of their eyes, right? They see all the ruins of the past communities in front of their eyes. And then Allah says, Afahumul ghalibun. Do they think that they are the ones who are going to prevail? Do they think that what has happened 
will not apply to the others that they will prevail meaning what has happened to the others somehow they are going to escape it the sunnah of life repeats for everyone the sunnah of life for every creation is the same right this life is a test there is evil and then there is uh, good the test of evil is there the test of khair is there the test of evil is there for us to um, endure and the test of good is there for us to be grateful anyone who gives any other response to these tests is bound to fail uh, to experience failure and doom right so may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to remain mindful of this reality of our life kullu nafsin dha'iqatul maut that every soul is going to taste death and that we are going to be returned back to him and that every moment we are either inching closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or we are drifting away from him and our purpose in life is to maintain our link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that is the only means for eternal success may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this from us may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability the tawfiq to take, make the most of these lessons and become better than who we are inshallah assalamu alaikum